And I honestly think, like, I think this is feedback that, like, I wish more developers, and it's, I'm just one guy. Like, I'm not, like, the champion of the gamers. I'm just saying, for me, I wish that more playtesters played indie dev games and said, like, your opening spiel about the story should be 80% shorter. Like, people, unless it's, a like, a visual novel is an exception, or unless you're of the opinion that you, and, and I can't dissuade you from this, um, that you've written, like, the next great American novel in digital form, then you, you need to at least get to the gameplay, which is the reason they probably bought the game a little bit faster. You never lose by, like, just dropping someone into the game and then giving them the story later, you know? It's not like a movie, necessarily, where, like, somebody's gonna drop into, like, a field with a sword and a shield, and they're, oh, so I'm just killing slimes? Why am I just killing slimes? This is, there's ludonarrative dissonance here. This doesn't make, the, the slimes invade my kingdom? Did the slimes, um, are the slimes growing from underground? Were they here, but, like, please, please, give me a, a seven-minute cutscene, but that's not really a cutscene, it's just pressing A to get like static images well, with text on them to pass through. And the King Diodric of the 17th realm hated the slimes, so he banished the slimes from the kingdom. Like, there's exceptions. Like, there's some games where I'm like, I don't interface with the story that much, but everybody loves the lore. One of them is Hades, for sure. That being said, no disrespect, but most of you don't play as many games as I do. So, like, when you get mad that I skip lore in Hades, I'm like, yeah, okay, I can see why you get mad. But when you get mad when I skip the lore in, like, Bill's RPG 2 Roll Dice Edition, I'm like, why do you care? You're never going to see this shit. You're never buying this? Come on. But, I don't know, the rat with the sword, what, what's his motivation? It's your favorite story in video games? I don't know, like... I don't want to tell you because... It's, I'm a product of my time, you know? I was, uh... <clears throat> in my formative years, the most popular genre on the planet was uh, RPGs. Biggest RPG of all time, up to that point, Final Fantasy VII. You play Final Fantasy VII as a uh, as a thirteen year old. It blows your mind. It makes like it, it gets its tendrils into your brain. Oh! <laughs> I've said it before, but I got really lucky with Final Fantasy VII because I played it when it was at peak popularity. It was like probably. If you ask 25% of the pop, if you ask the whole population what's your favorite video game, you would have gotten like 50% Ocarina of Time, 25% Final Fantasy VII, and then like 25% Pong or something like that. Um, but then there was a huge like decade long backlash to Final Fantasy VII. Just because everything that gets popular also then has like an echo of becoming hated. But the themes from Final Fantasy VII have actually, either by prescience or pure luck, I chose to do nothing here, have actually, like, aged well. Cloud Strife being like an environmental terrorist, taking down like a, a hyper-capitalist -cap polluting regime in the first disc, like, that, that's, those are themes that still... If, if anything, they probably resonate more now than they did in, like, you know, 2005 when the game was, like, almost 10 years old. So it's just due to the, the turning of the world, the game actually is has a better legacy than, than a lot of games from that era, for sure. It's, we always call out things that age badly, but that actually, like, Final Fantasy VII aged pretty well, at least from a narrative context. Now, there is still a man with a machine gun for a hand, but I guess, honestly, I support that because it's cool. I mean, there's some stuff that didn't age um, well in it. What's the, what's the guy's name? Don... Don Julio? I can't remember. 
Ooh. Don Corneo, that's it. <laughs> this man are sick, etc., etc. But yeah, I would. I mean, this is a long and it's a long and short way of saying that. I don't know. Maybe like Final Fantasy VII. But I would have to think about it. I was not the kid who got way too into Sephiroth. I had cross aisle appeal. I could appeal to the normies by uh, talking about hockey, and I could appeal to the kid who pretended to be a ninja in class every day by talking about Final Fantasy VII. I could, I could straddle the line. I just feel like, um, for me, stories in games is like, they have to justify their existence. They don't get to just, like, they don't get, for me, I was going to say they don't get, but what I should say is I don't like when I buy a game because the screenshot of the gameplay looks cool and then the first 10 minutes of the game are, you know, basically like lore dumping me uh, for stuff I don't care about or at least have not been compelled to care about yet. Like maybe hook me with a little bit of gameplay first and then get, pace it out and give me a little introduction to the lore. But there's exceptions. Like, I would much rather, even though I didn't play too much Death Stranding, if I'm playing a Kojima game, please start with a 90-minute cutscene. Because that's what I'm here for. I'm, I'm here to see what's, you know, let's crack open the walnut that is the man's mind and see what spills out. But if I'm like, oh, whoa, what a cool deck builder. The kingdom of Mousia has been invaded by evil goo. Oh, really? Okay, what does that matter? Uh, well, not too much. Strike does 7 damage. You can also use Defend. That will block the next uh, incoming attack that happens to... You get the idea. Yeah, Slay the Spire is like Lion Soy, right? Go climb that tower. I could not tell you any... T I, I can barely tell you the names of the bosses in Slay the Spire. You got, um, Donut and Non-Donut. Didn't quite have enough there. Hexaghost, that's true. Large Slime. The Time Lord, that's okay, that's right, I remember the Time Lord, against my will. Big Crow, is he called the Fallen or something? <laughs> Large knight with a sword. The champion, right? Yeah, okay. Slay the Spire did story right, for sure, by not having any of it at all. Minus two, minus two. But why are we fighting Dono and Decca? Were they, were they created in a laboratory with nefarious Mako experiments by Dr. Hojo, who was working for the Shinra Corporation but was not really given uh, much oversight? They just said, here's some materia, go nuts. And what about Lucretia? Where does Lucretia factor into all of this? You got to take Sid's airship around to the Crystal Archipelago where you get Knights of the Round Table. Sorry, Knights of the Round. Knights of the Round Table is, is copywritten by Merlin. 